Large, imposing, and dominant, Carcharodontosaurids dominated Southern Hemisphere environments throughout the early through mid Cretaceous. Although much about them is little known, both due to the general tendency to be fragmentary, with some exceptions here and there, or poor descriptions and <coughs> Chiconodosaurus. Therefore, finding more of their remains is keen understanding more about them, and thankfully that has been the case with a new description of new taxa hailing from the Hinkle Formation of Argentina. This animal's holotype, which was referred to as the Campanus carcharodontosaurus, was discovered in 2012 by these wonderful people here, and even before being formally described and given a genus and species name, was already adding to our understanding of the group. The evolution of gigantism among dinosaurs has long been a topic of interest, with a big question regarding megatheropods, the largest known bipeds, in how they achieved their massive sizes, whether all in the same manner, or if there were different strategies. Understanding the macroevolutionary pressures driving the repeated independent evolution of gigantism, and the mechanisms by how it was attained, also helps in understanding how the respective ecosystems were structures, and how their environments would have shaped their overall growth and evolution. The study assessed multi-element histological analyses on a phylogenetically broad dataset from eight theropod families, with a particular focus on the large tyrannosaurids and carcharodontosaurids to reconstruct their growth rates and respective strategies. Tyrannosaurids, in particular Tyrannosaurus, have a heterochronic pattern of growth, which correlates with an accelerated model. T-Rex exhibited rapid subadult growth increases of nearly 2 kilograms a day for up to a decade, and then levelling off once they reach skeletal maturity. Said explosive growth in early to mid ontogeny is also observed in other sample celerosaurs, the broader group T-Rex belongs to, including the Ornithomimus, Ornithomimus, and the Caignathus, Anzu, although the pattern of growth in T-Rex appears to represent an even more extreme variant of this general growth pattern. This may also give an insight into the physiological mechanism for how previously small-bodied tyrannosaurs had the capacity to evolve quickly into the top predator niche after their vacation by large allosauroid theropods following the relatively unknown Cenomanian Tyronean extinction event. In contrast, the Campanus theropods had a more gradual and extended period of growth, better fitting a model of hypomorphosis, where retrocalculated ages for the age of the animal, revealing that the animal ranged in age from 39 to 53 years of age with skeletal maturity occurring after 35 to 49 years. This age estimate places this Carcharodontosaurid as one of the oldest known dinosaur specimens, certainly among the oldest for a large theropod, and similar to estimated ages for some sauropods, matching up closely to the rates seen in crocodilians. From this, it is evident that large body sizes in theropods can be achieved through quite different growth strategies, and that varying factors phylogenetically or environmentally do have a big impact, Said slower growth rates could well mean that they could have exploited the also growing sauropod populations for a longer period of time, although more research is needed to more accurately piece together this idea, although it's a pretty good one. Said animal was remarkably complete, being excavated alongside three sauropod skeletons over four field seasons, with the sandstone cap they were preserved in being very challenging to deal with, not only because it was tough to get through, but that some bones also had to be collected from its underside. After excavating, pectoral and pelvic elements, partial forelimbs, complete hindlimbs, ribs, vertebrae, and most importantly, a really complete skull were recovered, which really helps when it comes to understanding not only this animal's morphology, but a lot of other animals. As the most complete Carcharodontosaurus known from the Southern Hemisphere, a description was eventually made in 2022 once the bones were properly examined and described, being named Meraxes gigas, the genus name honouring a dragon from a song of ice and fire with their species name Gigas, meaning giant, in reference to their large size. At about 10 metres in length and having estimated weights of about 4 tonnes, they were considerable in size, with their skull alone being about 1.27 metres long, rivalling that of Acrocanthosaurus, which can reach lengths of 1.23. Chiconotosaurus has the next most complete skull among their group, although still missing a good part of their maxilla and several bones in the temporal region, rendering previous attempts to estimate their length uncertain with ranges anywhere from 156 to 180 centimetres in length. Scaling the missing bones from the more complete Meraxes provides an estimate of around 162 centimetres, still making theirs one of the longest and largest theropod skulls yet discovered, and remaining as among the biggest of their whole group. Alongside their large, ossified and cornified heads, their arms were also pretty short comparatively, even more so when compared to related animals. Meraxes, alongside the complete skull elements, also preserves novel anatomical information regarding the almost complete forelimbs, as mentioned earlier, with the reduced size appearing to have converged in many different theropod lineages, being Abelosauridae, Tyrannosauridae, and Alvarosauridae. 
What was found was that the exhibitors had a degree of falling reduction comparable to these animals, and that their reduction tracked statistically alongside head size in these lineages. The diminutive arms of these animals has been covered in great interest by many scientists, and is evidently a very intriguing topic from other videos I've done on the subject, with potential interpretations including reproductive behaviour, e.g. clasping, body support when rising from a sitting position, or predatory behaviour. Other authors have considered Tyrannosaurids and Abelosaurid forelimbs to be vestigial or with a limited function, and others yet have suggested that their reduction correlated with a selection for other traits. The study featuring Meraxes found some more support for the lesser hypothesis, in that these similar proportions were observed in unrelated theropod lineages. The presence of multi-ton theropods with longer forelimbs but with smaller skulls, like Gigantoraptor and Stinocharis, further confirms that forelimb reduction is not a simple correlation with increased body sizes, but rather that it tracks another trait, which for large theropods like Meraxes, is likely their skull size. Five of their sacral vertebrae are co ossified not only through their centra, but also between the neural spines. In other Carcharodontosaurids like Acrocanthosaurus and Giganotosaurus, some of their neural spines show partial co ossification away from the base, but not to the degree seen in Meraxes, which would have given them a comparatively sturdy back region. Another notable trait they possessed was that the second claw on their feet appeared to be decently larger than their others, as well as having a sharper, sickle-like ventral edge to it, drawing comparisons to some modern raptor species that have a similar condition. Along with the proportionally long legs for their group, Sertacurve claw may have assisted them with pinning down smaller prey, something that with their around 30% bigger claw and increased leverage, would have perhaps been similar to birds like Seriamas, thus incorporates said strategies. Meraxes' phylogeny and habitats are pretty interesting as well, as from analysis conducted on them and their remains, it was found that they represented the earliest diverging member of the tribe Chiganotosaurini, a mid-Cretaceous clade of South American Carcharodontosaurids, including Chiganotosaurus, Mapusaurus, and Tyrannotitan. The addition of yet another genus of Carcharodontosaurid from the Winkle Formation, coexisting with the medium-sized relative Tori Venator, shows that this clade and the larger group of Carcharodontosaurids as a whole were quite diverse leading up to their extinction. Meraxes does indeed appear to be stratigraphically intermediate between Giganotosaurus from the underlying Candeleros formation and Mapusaurus from the younger levels of the Hinkle formation. The Hinkle formation is a diverse environment, which is thought to be generally seriamid with seasonal streams, not too far off from its current day state, only with different plant types being dominant. Regarding animals, Meraxes would have shared their environment with other theropods like the Abelosaurid, Scorpiovenator, as well as the Manoraptoran, Aioniraptor not to mention the largest reliably known sauropod being Argentinosaurus, which would have surely been an imposing challenge to Meraxes once fully grown. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.